How's it going everybody, Raising Hell here, and today we're going to be taking a brief look at Enter the Gungeon. So this is a bit of a bullet hell roguelike game by the developer Dodge Roll and published by the always ubiquitous Devolver Digital. A lot of people have compared it to games like Binding of Isaac, but those games are not truly considered to be bullet hell games, and that's what Enter the Gungeon sort of capitalizes on. So I'm just going to jump into the game right away, and you'll be presented with a little bit of backstory. I think I skipped all the backstory at this point, and now is the time to actually choose your protagonist here, the person you're going to enter, enter the gungeon with. For the most part, I played the Marine because it was the character recommended to me, and one of the things that I've not fully explored is the totality of their equips, because primarily I just used the gun. But there are other classes here as well, like this one has a crossbow in addition to the gun. Uh, pretty much all the characters are ranged for obvious reasons. This is a bullet hell game and pretty much its name is Enter the Gungeon, so you kind of expect there to be guns. I'm going to be playing the Marine here because I'm a little bit more familiar with what they do, but I think that's one area that I would like to see changed a bit is because I didn't really feel any major distinctions between other classes. Like maybe introduce the players a little bit more to their unique uh, e equipment, right? Because uh, everybody starts with a gun. But when you go into something like the inventory, so this is a book, it's like a dictionary, a wiktionary, whatever you want to call it. Um, they list things like the guns that you have available to you, but they really never tell you anything about it. Uh, like it, it mentions that this is the Marine side arm and has infinite ammo. Does not reveal secret walls. But when you pay, take a look at some of the other things that I've discovered over time, it really doesn't explain how it's uh, differentiated from other weapons, and I found this to make it a little bit more boring. Uh, oftentimes, these descriptions tend to be a little bit more tongue-in-cheek, I think, than actually instructive. And that's something that, like, <clears throat> here's the thing. Uh, I'm not necessarily keen on having to use a wiki to figure out a game that's designed to be sort of a... Uh, roguelite. Uh, when it comes to survival games, I can sort of understand it, but mm, I'm not quite as keen on it for a roguelite. So for me, you know, when you give a description of a weapon and it mentions the vertebrae, is it the vertebrae 47? Obviously a bit of a play on the AK-47, I imagine. Oh, it even mentions references the AK-47 down here. But it says, an abomination. This dark weapon was assembled from the fallen, from a fallen adventurer's spinal column and an AK-47 frame, right? That doesn't help me make a decision as to whether or not I'll find it to be a useful weapon. And there are a lot of weapons. So when you think about just the need to memorize the stats of all these weapons, it seems to be a little bit insurmountable. It's a bit of a, an ask, right? You're making a pretty big demand of players when they start playing this game to need, <laughs> to, need to memorize stats or look them up every time for each of these very unique weapons. Like there are a lot of guns here. And that was one thing that particularly bothered me, and it sort of, I would say, de-incentivized, disincentivized me from uh, fully exploring the other classes because I didn't see any desire on the part of the developers to make distinctions, to make obvious distinctions between what different guns did. Uh, some, in some ways, it felt like just uh, having stuff for the sake of having more stuff. So, <clears throat> oh, there I got hit. This is what it's mostly about. I was trying to do a dodge roll, but that ghost got me. So you start out with a pistol, and the pistol has ammunition in it. Uh, you will have to reload after firing it, otherwise it will reload automatically. So if I fire every bullet in the clip, it will go ahead and reload automatically, but if I like, fire four of them and then I press R, it will reload the clip. Uh, I have unlimited ammunition for this gun because this is the default sidearm. Uh, you can do a, you can perform a roll. Uh, I'm currently using the keyboard, so or the mouse and keyboard setup, so I can perform a roll simply by hitting the right mouse button. And when you're in that roll animation, you sort of have invincibility frames. Knocked over that cauldron there, or whatever that was. I haven't uh, found a way to best optimize my environments at this point, and I think it's pretty understandable because I'm still fairly new at the game. But. When it comes to most of the combat, it involves dodging the enemy's projectiles while at the same time shooting with your gun. And different enemies obviously have different uh, attack patterns. Like you could see that uh, enemy right there had a very wide, I don't know what you want to call it, a wide attack pattern, right? Fire a lot of bullets all at once in a wide area that you have to try to avoid. So a lot of the progression that you'll see in this game can come down to simply needing to memorize attack patterns of enemies so that way you're not caught off guard. Here's a shop, so this is pretty standard if you've played games like Spelunky. Uh, there will be like one shot per level, and this guy will actually get mad at you, much like in Spelunky. 
where if you decide to shoot up his shop, uh, he's going to go after you and kill you, basically. But there are various upgrades available here, like a key to unlock locked chests. Uh, there's a bit of a shield. Uh, at the moment, I lost my shield, so that would be interesting to buy, but I currently don't have enough uh, bullet casings. I think the currency's bullet casings. Can't be quite sure about that. They're those golden bullet-like uh, icons. That uh, ghost there had an AK-47. When we could see the enemies that are ready to spawn in, I think I uh, dodged that frame there, or dodged that bullet there by using an inv invincibility roll frame. Whenever you perform this action, and that's something that I felt I really do need to get better at to actually succeed at this game, because at the moment, um, too many times when I actually roll, I tend to roll into danger instead of rolling away from it, which is a bit of a bummer. Now, there is a map, and I do kind of like this feature of it. It means that backtracking isn't quite as tedious as in some other kind of dungeon-crawling roguelike games. Uh, you can teleport from anywhere on the map to any of these green locations. So, example, I could teleport right here to the shop right away. I could jump back to the map, teleport to this room, because we can see uh, on the map that this room has two rooms adjacent to it that we ha I haven't explored yet. But there was really no reason to do a lot of tedious backtracking. I didn't have to walk through these rooms and these corridors to get here. And I really do like that because it keeps the game speed. It, it speeds the game up overall and it keeps it from getting uh too boring i think or too tedious because it, it means that you'll always be involved in very action-packed scenarios even if you're playing the same level like the first level multiple times uh it's also randomly generated so every room that you enter has a pretty good chance of being different from other rooms that you've encountered before or at least the layout of the overall level of the gungeon will be different uh, you can knock tables over, which I found to be pretty cool. And right here is a key that one of the enemies dropped. Uh, you need that for unlocking things like a chest. We saw a chest down here, so maybe I should actually jump down there and go ahead and unlock this chest. Press E, and you can see we got uh, a weapon. Sometimes you get items, sometimes you get weapons. One of the things, like I've mentioned before, is I haven't been uh, really keeping tabs on what items I have. Like at the moment, I have the supply drop, which calls an, an ammo drop. I have not used this nearly as frequently as I probably should be using it. Because when you get uh, exclusive weapons, like you can see, I now have this Mega Dowser here. Um, <clears throat> like once again, what, what I reiterated, I'm going to reiterate some of the stuff that I said a little bit earlier in this video. But it says the description for it is a water gun might seem to be a poor weapon for gun engineering, and in most cases that is true. But a well placed blast of water can douse a raging infernal <clears throat> inferno. A soaked enemy can be electrified. A dazed foe can be pushed into the abyss. <sighs> like. I just don't understand the like how it compares, how it stacks up against other weapons at that point. Is it very specialized in terms of what use cases you can actually find where it would be practical versus the regular weapon? I, I'm just not sure. So for me, that was uh, that was a bit of a stickler. Uh, I forget how to call in the ammo drop. Actually, it's down here. You can see that I have the ammo. Oh, I just use my oh my water gun has like this huge bar. Yeah, I haven't actually used this weapon before. Apparently you don't reload it though. Uh, so it's, it's interesting for sure, it's just that I wish there was a little bit more uh, actionable information that was provided for these weapons than they're currently... Let's, let's try dousing this fire here. Yeah, you can douse the fire with it, that's for sure. How about this lamp? Oh, I can put out the lamp as well. It's an interesting weapon for sure, but I don't think it's nearly as practical as the sidearm. And I have managed to kill the, uh, the first level boss with the sidearm, so... Wish there was a teleporter that was a little bit closer to the dungeons that I need to raid. I'd like to get to the boss yet before I kind of wrap this up. Um, one of the things that I kind of noticed in my like, two to three hours of playing is that you will be going through this first level quite a bit. Uh, it helps, of course, that it is randomized. It's randomly generated. Um, but uh, you don't get to see a lot of new stuff exactly because of that. You're going to... Oop, we, got a, we got a big shot there. Apparently, yeah, there's the, the gladiator dude with the large broadsword. Or whatever you want to call it. Um, but like kind of one of the things I wanted to compare Enter, Enter the Gungeon to with some other games that I felt to be in a, oh, took a hit there, in a similar niche. So uh, a, a lot of people compared Enter the Gungeon to games like Binding of Isaac. And it's a pretty apt comparison, but I also found a couple of other ones that I found to be similar in theme or style. Uh, one of those, of course, is Hotline Miami. Hotline Miami is a little bit more strategic though, much less bullet hell. Uh, you can actually think about your moves before you make them in general. And another game that I was thinking of comparing uh, Enter the Gungeon to here was a game that I played about three years ago. It was also a dungeon crawler kind of game. It was called Hammer Watch. And 
I think that, you know, based on the amount of time that I've played here, obviously it's not a completely fair comparison, but I liked Hammer Watch better, and I think it was mostly because it had an emphasis on not just guns, or I should say it didn't have an emphasis on only guns as weapons. You could actually play many different classes. There was like a priest class, there was an archer class, so you got your range, you got your paladins, you got your warrior, just so many different classes. It made the game feel a little bit fresh when playing different ones, because that was one of the things that I didn't like about the different classes that I did play in here, is that they didn't they didn't seem to be very distinct from one another. They generally seem to all have guns with like maybe small modifications. And I really can't speak with any authority on the different classes in Enter the Gungeon, because I honestly have not given more than a couple of them one try. Uh, I've mostly been playing the Marine here. But... When it comes to other games like Hammer Watch, uh, another reason why you might prefer it over Enter the Gungeon is because it actually had um, multiplayer, online multiplayer, and it actually had decent lobbies. I remember playing it back in early 2015, and I was able to usually complete a run through the entire game. Like, if you weren't necessarily good at the game, you could play a healing class and wait for new players to join your world and then help them along until they died or quit and then just uh, monkey around until a new player would join that lobby and uh, help you progress. So like there was a way to progress through the game, there was a way to get to see the end game, even if you weren't necessarily that good, and it was due in part to the fact that it had really strong online multiplayer. Now, oh look, we got a, got a bullet here. I guess that's an item. It's a shadow bullet. Double tap. I'm not sure what that does, I should look it up. You can see uh, it, I just fired one. I think that's a permanent item, it's like a permanent upgrade. Um, yeah, so unlike Enter the Gungeon here, when it came to Hammer Watch, I didn't have to necessarily be good at the game to be able to complete it, providing there were, there were other people to support you. And, and Enter the Gungeon does have local multiplayer, but it does not have online multiplayer. And as, as far as I'm aware, neither does do games like Hotline Miami or uh, Binding of Isaac. So in that regard, I, I think, because I'm somebody who focuses a little bit more on multiplayer, sort of team co-op games, I think that makes a pretty good case for Hammer Watch. If you're interested in games like Enter the Gungeon, and it's funny that I'm talking about, or sort of promoting Hammer Watch here, I'm playing Enter the Gungeon, but I think if you're somebody who, oh, this is an ammo drop, but my ammo is full. Here, let's, we get, there we go. Got the water pistol all refueled. If you're somebody who likes Enter the Gungeon, but maybe would like it to be a little bit more team focused, especially online, play, being able to play it online with other players, take a look at Hammer Watch, because I think it has a lot of similarities, aside from not being quite as focused on actual gunplay. You don't have to fire as many bullets and stuff. Okay, here, our first boss. I just want to try to lose at this, because I'm probably going to lose at it. Um, yeah, these can be, oh yeah, I've never actually beaten these guys. If it was the king, the guy in the armchair, I probably could have beaten him, but these guys are a bit harder. Let's let's try to water gun. I'm interested to see if I can get any damage done here with this water gun. Yep. That was not good. And... Okay, we can clear all the bullets by using that. <laughs> okay. Not doing so good. Not doing so good at all. I feel the need to continually uh, provide commentary over it, and that's something that is very difficult to do when you're under fire like that. Uh, just focusing on bullets in general. Uh, so that took uh, nine minutes, and obviously you can rush this level a lot faster if you don't pay attention to like clearing the entire gungeon out, this entire level. Uh, you can just rush to the boss. It, you know, sometimes you will find it early on, sometimes you won't. It, it depends, but like in general, each uh, level is pretty pretty fast. I could have done this one faster. I probably could have done it in five minutes. Uh, in the past, I've done that, so even if you are killed, in general, it, it doesn't feel like a huge loss, like some other roguelike games where it can take you an hour or two hours to actually get killed. And uh, then we can either do a quick restart or escape to go ahead and choose another class and get started again. So as you can see, we can change classes here. Uh, and I know I know that Enter the Gungeon is a bit old at this point, but I thought that since I just finished playing it uh, for a couple of hours in the past couple of weeks, a few hours I should say at this point, in the past couple of weeks, that I would give you my thoughts on it. And hopefully it was different enough from a lot of the other commentary out there about the game. So thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.